Glory to God. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1 to 4. This morning we are looking at the joy of harvest. You will go home with joy. When there is salvation, there is joy. When there is healing, there is joy. When there is harvest, there is joy. Nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed. As when at first it lightly esteemed the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward more heavily oppressed her by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan in the Galilee of the name of the Gentiles. Verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. But whoever threatens your life is arrested. You will not die. You will live. It doesn't matter how many people we are taking. We exempt you. By the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. You have multiplied the nation. And increased its joy. They rejoice before you. According to the joy of harvest. As men rejoice. When they divide the spoil. When they come into a sudden breakthrough. You have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder. The rod of his oppressor as in the day of Midian. The day of Midian is the day of Gideon. It was the day in which Israel could not enjoy their harvest the way they wanted to. You find that story in Judges chapter 6. The Bible says when Israel had labored and their harvest comes, the Midianites will come like locusts and take everything. It got so bad that Gideon was hiding wheat in the wine press. Because the joy of harvest was taken. But what did God do? God, God said, I will break that oppressor like I broke the media. Whatsoever will not allow your joy to be food, God will break it today. In Jesus' name. In verse 3, there he spoke to us about something significant. In verse 3, he said, you have multiplied the nation, increased the joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest. There are certain parallels that exist in, in human existence that shock me. They speak about the wisdom of God and about how closely related human beings are than we think. Some are positive, some might look negative for you. But for example, the Greek culture and the Yoruba culture share so many similarities that you ask yourself whether they shared philosophers that traveled in between one another. For example, the god of thunder in Yoruba land is called Shongo, and his symbol is an axe that has two, two. It looks like an armor. And the god of thunder in the Greek culture is Thor, and his symbol is an armor. That strikes down. The question is, from who to who did they learn it? There are certain things that are written in the arts of men. No matter the culture they find themselves. It will just manifest. Another one is harvest festivals. How many of you know harvest festival? Do they do the Jeshu in your town? And if you think it's a Yoruba culture, you don't know human history. So many harvest festivals. I don't even have time. I could have read some for you. From the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere, every community celebrates harvest. Because harvest brings the same experience to everybody. Joy. 
whether you are in the, even in the United Kingdom, there is what they call the Lamas Festival. Thanksgiving that you celebrate in America is an harvest festival. I hope you know. Even though most of us will be doing Thanksgiving. When you do, when they do yam festival in your town, you will shoot that it's, it's occultic. Yes, I know the problem with African culture is that we mix our superstitious attitude into everything. But in actual sense, what we are trying to celebrate is harvest. And it elicits the same reaction everywhere. The only reaction Harvest Festival elicits anywhere in the world is joy. In Psalm 4 verse 7, even the scripture attested to it, like we read in Psalm, Isaiah 9 verse 3, but in Psalm 4 verse 7, he said, you have put gladness in my heart more than in the season when their grain and their wine increased. What symbolized the season of the increase of grain and wine? Gladness. In the place where we read, and in, in Acts chapter 14, where Paul raised a man at Lystra. In verse 15. From verse 15. It says, saying, why are you doing this thing? We are also men with the same nature as you and preach to you that you should turn from these useless things to the living God who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all things that are in it, who in bygone generations allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. That's why all nations celebrate their harvest festivals but according to their own idols because God allowed them to walk in their own ways. They took what God gave them and ascribed it to other names. Nevertheless, he did not leave himself without witness. What was his witness? He did good. Someone say God is good. It w- God's goodness didn't start when you became born again. If God waited to be, for you to be born again before he started being good to you, you will be a wreck before he ever met you. God causes the rain to fall upon the righteous and on the unrighteous. God has, even in generations that did not recognize him, in bygone generations that walked in their own ways, he never left himself without witness. He did good. He gave us rain from heaven. And what? Fruitful seasons. What did the fruitful season do with us? Filling our hearts with food and gladness. So when I tell you that you have come to the joy of harvest, you have no other thing to take home than joy. I said you have no other thing to take home than joy. That is your portion in Jesus' mighty name. Scripture told us it makes the rain to fall upon the righteous and the unrighteous. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 48. Be like your father who is in heaven. It does good to everybody, including people that don't even reciprocate. He said, don't just, I said to you, love your enemies. Bless those who cause you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. And that you may be sons of your father in heaven. It makes his son, it is his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And it says the rain on the just and on the unjust. Even in the culture that God formed by himself, which is the Jewish culture, there is a harvest festival. And it is called the Feast of Tabernacles. Some other places call it the Feast of Ingathering. Some other places call it the Feast of Booths. And there are reasons why it's called these different names. And the Hebrew is called the Sukkot. Booths. Sukkot means Booths. Booths means tents. What is God saying with this feast? Exodus chapter 23, verse 14 to 17. Exodus 23, 14 to 17. Three times you shall keep a feast to me in the year. You shall keep the feast of the unleavened bread. You shall eat unleavened bread seven days as I commanded you. At the time appointed in the month of Abib. For in it you came out of Egypt. None shall appear before me empty. Continue. And 
the feast of harvest. The first fruit of your labors which you are sown in the field. And the feast of ingathering at the end of the year. When you have gathered in the fruit of your labors from the field. Three times in the year shall your meal appear before the Lord. When you have gathered it, one of the reasons why there is joy at the feast of ingathering is because they would have gathered in all that they have labored. Your labor will not be lost. One of the reasons why you are going home today with the joy of harvest is that you will receive whatsoever you have labored for in the name of Jesus Christ. In Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 13 to 17, speaking about this same feast, 16 from verse 13 to 17. You shall observe the feast of tabernacles. That's what they call it here. Seven days. When you have gathered from your threshing floor and from your wine press, you shall rejoice. Who is going to rejoice here? I said you will rejoice. You shall rejoice in your feast. You and your son and your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, there is somebody here, when you look around you, even people that are working with you will connect joy. It will not just happen to you, it will not just happen to your wife, it will not just happen to your children. Even co-workers will contact joy in the name of Jesus. Your male servant, your female servant, the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, the widow, who are within your gates. Continue. Seven days you shall keep a sacred feast. To the Lord your God in the place which he chooses because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce, in all the works of your hands so that you will rejoice. Three times a year all your men shall appear before the Lord your God in the place which he chooses at the feast of unleavened bread, the feast of weeks, the feast of tabernacles. You shall appear before, you shall, they shall not appear before the Lord empty and dead. Every man will give. See, when there is harvest, giving is easy. Today, the Lord will rebuke divorce for your sake. And it will be easy for you. With joy, you will bring to God. Are, are we together? Say, but somebody say, with joy, I'm bringing to God. Every man shall give as he's able according to the blessing. You will not steal to give. You will give because you are blessed. The Bible said, the Lord said, I, the Lord, I hate robbery for burnt offering. What do I like? I like blessing for burnt offering. That means you will give according to blessing. So today, in the name of Jesus, as, you, as, you, as this joy of harvest is spoken over you, you will give according to blessings. You will not give according to scarcity. You will give because you are blessed. The Lord will bless you and your, and your bands will overflow in the name of Jesus Christ. Going further, in Leviticus 23, verse 33 to 44, speaking about this same feast called the Feast of Tabernacles, which is an harvest feast feast. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel, the 15th day of the seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days to the Lord. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work in it. On it. On the, uh, for seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It's a sacred assembly. You shall do no customary work on it. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocation. To offer an offering made by fire to the Lord, a burnt offering and a grain offering, the sacrifice and drink offerings, everything on his day. Continue. Beside the Sabbaths of the Lord, beside your gift, beside all your vows, beside all your free will offerings, which you give to the Lord. Also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep the feast of the Lord for seven days. On the first day, there shall be a Sabbath rest. On the eighth day, shall be a Sabbath rest. See, speaking about the feast of tabernacle. You shall take for yourself on the first day the fruit of beautiful trees, the branches of palm trees, the boughs of leafy trees, the willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice. Are you saying one word? What is the common word in all these things? You will rejoice. I mean, nobody sees harvest and they. That's why in every culture, whether they are animists, whether they fear God, they don't fear God. When harvest come, they react. Why do they react? Because harvest brings one reaction. Joy. Are you following me? You will have an harvest. 
that you will rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. May the Lord give you a joy that will last. You will keep it as a feast to the Lord for seven days in the year. It shall be a statue forever in your generation. You shall celebrate. You have jumped. You shall celebrate in the seventh month. You will dwell in boots. That's why it's called the feast of boots in other places. For seven days. All who are native Israelites shall dwell in boots, that is tents. That your generations may know that I, I made the children of Israel to dwell in boots when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord your God, verse 44. So Moses declared to the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. I will make your generation to know I've been taking care of them before sophistication came. When they were dwelling in tents, they didn't lack. So when the, it is not the fact that they built cities now. You understand? You still know I'm still speaking few cities and, and villages. It's still the same series. They are, dwelling in, they are now dwelling in cities now, but please take them back to where you started from. For 40 years, you are dwelling under tents and you are a nation. What makes you who you are is not your possession, it's your God. It's the identity of your God in your life. And he will rejoice over you with joy in Jesus' name. Why is it that everywhere the Feast of Harvest elicits joy? Number, one, I will give you a couple of reasons. Number one, you cannot, he called it the feast of ingathering, which means where you would have brought in all your harvest from the field. It automatically means God has rebuked devourers for your sake. Because devourers make us know labor does not automatically mean harvest. Why we rejoice? Is because we know labor is not the only factor that determines whether we end well. There are things that can be introduced into labor that will make them nothing. They are called devourers. So why? When anytime they have the opportunity of bringing in from the field into the house, there is great joy because that means God has intercepted every work of the enemy. That's what Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 to 12 told us. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 to 12. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out such a blessing that there will be no room enough to receive it. I remember that message, such blessing. You need to go get that sound. That's, that's, that's some stuff. Such blessing. That's about three years ago. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Because the devourer too likes harvest. There is an enemy that doesn't mind you to labor. There is nothing else. He doesn't even mind you to be diligent. He can take everything. That's the symbol of the Midianites. That's why God said, I had to break the yoke of the Midianites from you so that you can have the joy of harvest. Because the Midianites, the Bible described them like locusts. And when, what does locusts look for? Harvest. But I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, so that it will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall your vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And verse 12 said, and all nations will call you blessed. Now, why did they call you blessed? It's not because you have an harvest. It's because the Lord rebuked devourers. Because you can have an harvest, and if the devourers sit on it, you're you will not smell it. Some people walk, and they don't smell the walk. Some people are promoted and they never smell it. Nothing in their body, nothing in their life reflects as if they are even doing anything. But when you come to the feast of the ingathering, the feast of the tabernacle, you come to the joy of harvest because God has allowed you to escape the power of the devourers and to bring in your harvest. You escape the devourers in Jesus' name. It means there is no wasted labor. That's why there is joy. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 20 to 23. Isaiah 65, verse 20 to 23. No more shall an infant from there live for a few days, nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days. For the child shall die 100 years old, but the sinner being 100 years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. It is not automatic that when you plant, you eat. It is not. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. 
Ah, yeah, Bada. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree show that the days of my people be, my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hand. How many of you know you are not angry against hard work? What you are angry against is to work hard and yet it does not turn out. But today in the name of Jesus, you will not build and another inhabit. You will plant vineyard and heats of it in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 23. They shall not labor in vain. They shall not bring forth children for trouble. They shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. They will not labor in vain. They will not bring forth children for trouble. Children are a symbol of harvest, of labor. There are people that have children and they cause the day they gave birth to them. Not my child. Prophesy to yourself. Say, not my children. I will not bring forth for trouble. When I bring forth, they are for blessings. When I bring forth, they are for blessings. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what they are in my life. That's what they are in my life. Because I have the joy of harvest. I will not labor, take them to school, take them everywhere, pay their school fees, and 20 years after, I look at them and say, what time have I wasted? That's not my portion. I will not labor for trouble. I will not bring forth children for trouble. Why do we have the joy of harvest? Because God allowed you to have no wasted labor. You will not have wasted labor. We don't mind labor. It is blessed to walk. God commanded man to walk, to tend the ground, even from the day he created him. What is the pressure? Is that there is an enemy that wants you to toil without an harvest. Why is it that anywhere from Mongolia to Angola, there is a joy of harvest? Because it tells them there is hope for the future. There is something about hope. It does not, it has a way of ridiculing everything you are going through at the moment. Hope tells you, you see, it doesn't matter what is happening now. What matters is what is about to come. Harvest does not just speak about the moment. Harvest speaks about the time to come. Are you following me? And there is somebody here that the Lord will lift up your eyes and lift up your head and cause you to see a brighter tomorrow than the gloom of today in the name of Jesus. Them that dwell in darkness have seen a great light. A great light. Oh my God. If you dwell in a place and you look around and there's nothing to look forward to, like sometimes in Nigeria, even the capacity to walk is in that. Bishop was telling me, he's a lecturer, he's a doctor, and he told me, he said, he told me when he came over the weekend that there are certain research he wanted to do. When he just looked ahead, he said, why am I wasting my time? He just kept the research in his pocket till the day he goes to Georgia. Or go to UK and because there's no you look ahead and it's gloom but we are going to rejoice with the joy of harvest and what does the joy of harvest give to us it tells us there's hope for the future it tells us there is victory there is sustenance for the moment God is not just looking at, at, at your future he's looking at your today it's called God give us our daily bread you are not just celebrating tomorrow today too is a blessing I said today is a blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. He speaks that you have victory over your enemy because left your enemy will never allow you to bring in an harvest. Throughout scripture, we saw even in history, most times that the enemy attacks another nation is at the time of harvest. Why did America invade Iraq? There's oil. Is their oil? It became their cause. Why is the Niger Delta fighting? Is their oil? Is their trouble? The enemy does not mind whether you have anything. It can turn that thing to the reason why you hate life. But people are married. That's why they are trouble. But that's not my portion. I rejoice with the joy of harvest. 
because God will give me room to bring in all my labors. I wait till you here. It means there are there is new beginnings. Are we together? It shows you the miracle of life. I'm, I'm rushing. This is important. He breaks every sense of loss. Let me tell you the truth. Increase. For it to come, there is going to be labor. And when, when you don't have an harvest for labor, you have the feeling of losing something. For example, what would have been an harvest could have been your meal. You deferred gratification for a future. Can you imagine to defer gratification and when the harvest comes, the enemy takes it. How do you feel? A sense of loss. Why is there joy anywhere in the world? People say, even though I went through pain, it worth it. There is somebody here, it will gather together. I say, it will worth it. You will look at it and say, well, it worth it. It worth it. Because the Lord will give you the joy of harvest. And the joy of harvest does one thing. It makes you to have no sense of loss. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 19 to 21. Isaiah 49 verse 19 to 21. For your waste and desolate places and the land of your destruction. Nobody will say, how is this leading to healing? Just wait. Just wait. The land of your destruction will even now be too small for the inhabitants of those who swallowed you and those who swallowed you will be far away. The children you will have after you have lost the others, we again say to you, this, the place is too small for me. Give me a place where I may dwell. You will say in your heart, who has begotten this for me? Since I lost my children and I'm desolate, because when you take your seed and put it in the ground, you are praying. Because it can become a permanent loss. But when the harvest comes, is it not one seed I put here? I'm talking about a hundred for the who has begotten this for me? Since I lost my children, I'm dead, so I'm a captain, I'm wandering to and fro. Who has brought up this? There I was left alone. But this, where were they? Every time you see something happening in your life, you can't even trace. But it's working for your favor. <laughs> you can't sit there and say, I, 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 I'm. You are not this composed. It's because the joy of harvest has not come. If the joy of harvest come, what testify? You, you will roll like, like Ty will say, I must sing. You say, some, some of you say, I have self control. You don't have self control. You, have, you don't have enough harvest. There's a level of harvest that will happen. Uh, uh, even Joker will, will come and testify. I know she, she's very organized. And it's about, it's on the way. I say it's on the way. You will say, then you will come back the next Sunday after. You say, I didn't finish the testimony last Sunday. There is a part I left out. Let me again say it. Because God will do something. Who has begotten this for me? After I have lost the others. Joel chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. Then we'll go to Joel chapter 2, 21 to 24. Let me tell you why. Because putting seed on the ground does not automatically mean it will live. Joel chapter 1. Oh, read from verse 15. Let's go from verse 15. Alas, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. Is not food cut off from before our eyes? Joy and gladness from the house of our God. Why? The seed shrivels under the clod. What is clod? That is ridges. That means they put a seed in the ridge. But what happened to it? 
it shrivels, it dries up. Storehouses are in shambles. Bands are broken down. Grain has withered. And what is the result? How the animal has grown, the hearts of cattle are restless because there is no pasture. Even the flocks of sheep suffer punishment. Joy is cut off from the temple. Even your worship life is affected when your harvest is, is taken. Today, we rebuke the devourer for your sake. We rebuke the devourer for your sake. There is somebody here, you plan the deal with somebody. They swindled you. It came out, but your portion was not given to you. Today, we rebuke the devourer for your sake. By the word of the Lord, I rebuke that devourer. I command that that which was delayed be released back to you. I say your testimony has come. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is plotting your harvest and it will double that which you lost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at Joel chapter 2 from verse 21 to 24. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. For the Lord has done marvelous things. What has the Lord done? Do not be afraid, you beast of the field. For the open pastures are springing up. The tree bears its fruit. The fig and the vine yield their strength. Be glad, you children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain faithfully. It will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in his first month. You see, these two prophecies are countering. This is God's counter for the prophecy of Joel chapter 1. In Joel chapter 1, there was no joy. The, the seed shrivels. But here, he said, the fig tree is yielding. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat. And the vat shall overflow with new wine and oil. And what does that give to you? Joy. Now, I want to expand further the joy of harvest this morning. In the book of Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 32, we saw three cycles of losses and recovery spoken by the, by the Lord Jesus himself. The first one was the lost sheep. The other one was the lost coin. The third one was the lost son that we call the prodigal son. Luke chapter 15 from verse 1. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to hear him. One of the joy of harvest we are going to have in faithless assembly. That people that seem not to have desire for what we are doing, they will start coming inside this hall. There is something about seeing new faces. It is the joy of harvest. There is something about discipling a new set of people that I'm about to start experiencing. That you're about to start experiencing. You know, there is something about when you are already accustomed to something. Pastor, to very share the joy of harvest. Thursday was an uh, unfriendly friend. Uh, lean or straight. Ah, Do you know why you are feeling like that? You are overfed. I need some task collectors. I need some sinner. You know when they look at somebody, they say sinner. He has embodied it. It's an embodiment of sinner. Some task collector and sinners came. The Pharisees complained. This man received sinner. One of the joy of harvest that I'm trusting God to do in this house is that capacity that make you open doors for sinners to come. See, one of the challenges we have in church that does not make us to have the fullness of the joy of our fellowship is that we like just sitting around ourselves too long. And there's a type of joy we can derive from our fellowship. But there's another type of joy that we derive when we speak to people who are astray. Are you following me? That's why I've been talking to you about the field. 
That's why I've been trying to take your eyes away from this community and from this congregation. Because there's so much joy outside when you see somebody change. And there's so much uh, chance of ignoring what is happening here because you have forgotten that you were saved from your sin. Some of you can't even remember what it means to be an unbeliever. You thought you were always like this. <laughs> you are, you are still, you are washed. You are delivered. And there are people outside there that, were, that are still where you used to be. That are like money like anything. How many of you used to know how you like money? You are a sinner. Oh, it be a the 12th, 30th, Lord. You trampled on your wives and your relationships because of money. You will not finish your money. Are you here? Are you here? There are people still trapped in that cage. There are people. Some tax collector and sinner came to him. The Pharisees complained. This man receives sinners and hit with them. And some of you are still complaining because you like this community more than reaching the world. Okay, no problem. They should not come to my house. I will send them to yours. But the way I say I'm sending them, they say, Pastor, I'm going to lock on. In the fair. Come on, the church. You see, that's a problem. You want to turn this place to the field when you are the ones God sent. That's why your joy is not full. Every time you are coming here, you are looking for me to prophesy. They take it, take it. You only walk. When I started prophesying in the beginning, I didn't say amen. You are an ambassador. So what, when they were complaining, what did he do? He spoke this parable to them saying, what man of you having a hundred sheep if he loses one of them, does not leave 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost and find it. How many of you have gone after what is lost? You would rather keep what is found. We have entered into management ministry when God has sent us to mission. That's why you are overbloated. That's why you are angry. They spoke to me this way in church. They did not, they did not greet me on bed day. That's the problem. You have no eyes on the field. Your eyes are on the 99. That's why you're overbloated. That's why they didn't greet you enough. If you disciple one person, you will forget whether they greet you or not. I want to tell you one last three months. I want to tell you one six months. Now, I'm not saying that the 99 are not valuable, but you need to understand the power of new beginnings. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulder. Doing what? Doing what? He comes home. He calls together his friends and neighbor. Why? Why is he calling to them? He has kept that sheep before. It's part of his fold. If he died and was destroyed by a wild animal, it would have been wasted labor. Let me tell you something. Every of this parable, you will just dis you discover a pattern in them that they were first owned before they were lost. Forget that the fact that people, a lot of people that don't look like they are God's own people, they are God's own before they were lost. They are not just radicals. What do you call it? Free radicals. In biochemistry. Something just existing by chance. They were owned. How are they owned? They were created. How are they owned? God delivered them from their mother's womb. How are they owned? People thank God when they gave back to them, including the ones that are killing people all around in the body. Including the ones you saw in the after that day. You know, when I was in university those days, somebody said, there are people that if they knew this, how they would turn out to be. 
they would have killed them and allowed the goat they killed the day of their naming ceremony to go. But there is no day you will never want more than a goat. It doesn't matter how you have become. There is no day you will never want more than fowls of the air. There is no day you will never want more than any other thing. You are man. You are owned by God. And when he comes to, he calls together his friends and anyway. Rejoice with me. I have found my sheep which was lost. You see, how many of you are amazed about the transformation that happened to people when they meet Jesus? They become who we never imagined they can be. What we never knew is that that thing you used to know them about us is their lost description, not who they were from the beginning. From the beginning, they were owned by God who wrote eternity in their heart. They were not born atheists. They had a quest for God. How many of you remember the first time you asked a question about God? What was your age? I was young when one of my cousins stood, it was at the garage in our house, and said, if Adam and Eve had not eaten the apple now, we would not be dying. That was the first time I had gospel. She had not, she didn't even know what she was saying. We were very angry that day with Adam. And young one, we know she. I was trying to look for Adam because I don't want to die. Some of you started trading with these questions from age four. Do you know why? Before you met you were savage, you were old. Before 50 cents came to disrupt you, you were old. That's why there is joy when you come back. Because the joy of harvest, it tells God, my labors are not wasted. I will say to you, likewise, there will be more joy in heaven. I pray you will understand the joy of heaven. That the joy of heaven too will become your joy. Over one sin, I will repent. Then over 99 just persons who are coming for Bibles and say, Pastor, what, what is the next sermon? There are people that don't need to know the title. They just need to know the effect. There are other people that are taking the title. Unfriendly friend. Don't join them. Enjoy it. But go. Bring somebody to God. Disciple somebody for God. There is a type of joy in that one. That is more than what you are even talking about. Why are many Christians dry? This is why they are dry. It's not the churches they are going to. It's that they are doing nothing. Speak to someone. Pray for someone. Hey, Father, I connect gray. Turn my life around. I step into my new Jeep. To do what? Even when you are doing work, you are, you are warning God. You are warning God. I will give testimony. As you give testimony, Temino. Temino, Nisho Rusho. I'm warning you that. I said to you, like, but there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents over that. Over 99 just persons who need no repentance. There's a type of joy you are experiencing. God is introducing you to another type. It's more than this one. That is all, because some of you really don't even have need for these sermons you are listening to now. Telling you because you are not planning to do anything with it. I was watching Papa Yorisha Jeff for it was 50 years in ministry last week. And I was shocked to learn of his story. He used to be on heavy drugs. Oh, there is power in a transformed life. was a top gang member.
And how he began to preach. And how do you know one thing that he said that struck me? He said, people don't get delivered from the level of drugs he was in suddenly. He said, but my own. Once. That's Jesus. Jesus can break 15 years addiction. Once. It's not that you are managing it. It's not that you are managing it. It will break masturbation once. You say, I can't even move one link by there are some of you now, when you see women, you see like this, this is the Father Lord, I call it, I plead the blood. You will see deliverance. Let them do 10 billboards in town, all naked. You will not see it. It is not discipline, it's deliverance. We need it again. Who can break the yoke of addiction if not Jesus? Sin has wrecked too many people. I have no other message that has the power and the hope of transformation than Jesus. And when we see it, it brings us a type of joy. Because we ourselves sit down and we observe us and we say, ah, come and see what the Lord has done. Is there anybody that looks like that here? That God did something in your life. You yourself sat down and said, ah, not like this. Not like that. Hallelujah. Told us the cycle of the lost sheep. Then he went further to the lost coin. Or oh, what woman having ten? Somebody say having. Which means it was first possessed. If she loses one, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, search carefully until she finds it. And when she has found it, what does she do? She calls her friend and neighbors together. Oh my God. There is a way we find something. It, it even it enlarges our fellowship. So one of the reasons why our fellowship is not rich is that you are not coming with anything. If you are coming to church, running to church, you want to tell us something you found. You will call, you will not, we will remember to say, Kike, are you coming? But do you know why you don't remember? You are coming to say nothing. When she found it, she calls her friend and neighbor and says, Rejoice with me. There is somebody here who will soon tell people, in case you are sorrowful, rejoice with me. Rejoice with me. Rejoice with me. There is something I've prayed for five years that just happened. Rejoice with me. For I have found the peace which I lost. They gave the third one. That one was more even elaborate. There was, there was a man that had two sons. The younger one said to the father, give me the portion of the property that belongs to me. And he took it went to a far country, wasted all his life, sat with them, a famine arose, he began to be in poverty, he was taking care of pigs and almost eating their food. Then one day he came to himself. My God and my Father will help you to come to yourself. Some of us have lived too far outside of the appetite of our peace. It's time to come to yourself. That anger is enough. Come to yourself. You are just losing and weakening yourself. You are not doing nobody anything. You are only wounding yourself. Please, did the prodigal father leave when the son left? Did, did he die? Did the other brother die? Okay. Continue. One more. Because then that one, you want one more. When life starts dealing with you, you will know something has gone wrong. He came to you and said, how many of my father's higher servants have enough bread? So when, you, when you are in the church like Vitres, there is enough bread. There is enough bread that you can stop your earning a salmon one hour before it hands. There is enough bread. He said, I will go and listen again. There is enough bread. There are places there are scarce bread also, no be wash wash lare. No be so riota. Tony Colomu, efumu. Ibe logo yiwa. Ah, 
thank God there is enough bread. How many of my fathers have I have? I, Bible study was somewhere enough. There is enough bread. Change your tomb, Lolly. Colorunus. Enough bread to, to spear. There are some things that some of you, if you share here, will just not look. When you go outside and share it, you are a reviver. We, it's not even our meal. It's what we spare. And it's a reviver. You don't get what I'm saying. See, he said, I, I, I perish with hunger. And you know the story, he went back home. And when he got home, what did the father do? He called for a feast. He said, do you know why? This my son was lost and found was dead and is alive. It's a type of joy. Nobody, if he dies, what will I have done? Yes, he did everything wrong, but he came back. The most important thing is that he came back. He was lost and he's found. And they began to be merry. You are leaving this place with some joy. Are, are you following me? Uh, yeah. I was angry, but you know, the most important thing now is I forgive him. I, 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 I was frustrated, but the most important thing is I, I, I'm willing. There are people recovering their willingness. There are people forgiving with ease. Yeah, and, and they will never be able to remember how it felt because of what God is doing now. Because when the harvest feast comes, it breaks every sense of loss. It was so bad that when the other brother came, he said, what nonsense is this? See, this is your son who wasted his life with our lots. Did everything. Then when he came back now, you, you are killing me. You did not give a goat to play. The brother said, you are with me, but you don't understand the power of rebirth. He said, this your brother was dead. No matter how evil you are, if you see a dead man come back to life, you will fear. Because it only points to one thing, the power of God. May your journey point to nothing else than the power of God. I said your journey will point to the power of God. In Deuteronomy 26, verse 1 to 11, God told Israel, when you get into the promised land, you will take a basket and put the fruit of the land there. Oh my God. A basket is, means that you are coming back not empty-handed. You have proven the word and it's coming with something. No, but God said to them, none of you will appear before me empty-handed. Your next visit is not empty. Your next coming to church is not empty. Do you know why? The word that you are taking home today as a seed is coming back as a basket. Amen. Uh, what's a basket? You will take a basket and say, say, my father was a Syrian ready to perish. We looked ahead. There was gloom. He said, but God took us out of the land of Egypt. Brought us here. Brought us increase, and out of the increase that He has given us is what I'm bringing now. And you will rejoice before the Lord your God. Why would you rejoice? Because you will know where you could have been, and compare to where you are. I used to tell people, people who had people who wasted February 14, jumping around, they are like you. So they find you, you know. Some people can't stay at all. They bought a screen, 85 inches, but they are bored. They go and stay around Shekwe. Say, Baba Toss. A mix it, a mix it. You are at home, you sit down. With your wife alone. 
They say you are stupid. They say, go here. I have rest. God will give you rest. <laughs> the type of rest that when your wife is in a board meeting, you are not a kid. You don't know that blessing. And it's only Jesus that can do it. Because who can, who, who, who can write the law of God in the heart of man? Not on tablets of stones, but on the heart of man, except the Spirit of God himself. It's the finger of God that does it. Glory to God. Let me come. I want you to know that the man healed in Lystra was a sign of complete harvest. What does it mean? In Acts 14, where we read from verse 8, there was a man in Lystra who was born crippled from his mother's womb. When his father sowed the seed, that was not what he was looking to have. He was looking to have a boy, a man, that have one head, two ears, two eyes, two strong legs. He got a result of a man who had one head, two ears, two legs without strength. The impute differed from the output. Today, there's any part of your body that is not functioning according to expectation. The hand of God will heal it today. Listen. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 1 to 6 made us to discover that childbearing is an harvest. It's not the number of times you sleep with a woman that determines whether the woman will be pregnant. Wake up in the morning. Like Bishop was telling me yesterday about one guy that has no self-control. Ola Akon. Oso. Ale. Many of you know people lose the interest after many years. You first enjoy it for pleasure after for, for one year. After one year. What's the result of all this? Come, come, what? Last month, love you, come. This month again, I'm coming to talk to people who are about to spring up with harvest in their wombs. I'm telling you. Because there shall be no wasted labor. <laughs> Cast your bread upon the waters. You will find it. You will find it. What you are looking for, you will find it. I said you will find it. They were not looking for a child with legs without strength. So when Paul looked at him, this is not what we are looking for. It's what we are looking for that we are going to have. We are not looking for a diseased child. We are not looking for a sickler. We are not looking for a woman one going from hospital to hospital. No, 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 no. Our harvest, there is going to be no sense of loss in it. We are going to have an harvest festival. So he looked at the child and the man said, Jesus Christ makes you whole. And in the name of Jesus, that discharging here, Jesus Christ makes you whole. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me? That pain in your right knee, in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ makes you whole. In the name of Jesus Christ. That womb that has not been able to conceive. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ makes you whole. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because there must be an harvest. There must be an harvest. Prophesy. Say I'm having my harvest. 
say I'm having my harvest he said with the loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. Don't stand bending. If some of you are just aware, I will take bending. At least I am not sitting. No, Jesus does not just want you bending. He wants you straight. You are taking a perfect miracle. You are not taking a side miracle. It will be perfected on all sides. In the name of Jesus Christ. It will not just be I'm doing this job to keep body and soul together. It will be something to take you forward. You are not just bending, you are standing straight. You are standing straight. You are standing as you are designed from the beginning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Go back to that Ecclesiastes 11. Go back to that Ecclesiastes 11. Cast your bread upon the waters. You will find it after many days. What did he say? Give a serving to seven, also to eight. You will not know what evil will be on the earth. Verse 3. He will observe the wind. Okay. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. If a tree falls to the south or the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it will lie. He will observe the wind. We know so. Paul did not look at the man's feet. Read your Bible. When Paul saw that the man had feet to be healed, may God take your eyes away from things that discourage you and plant it in things that will encourage you because if you look at a feet that has not worked from birth it will be all disjointed from the body it will look like it can never work but paul took his eyes away from the feet and fixed his eyes on the faith today take your eyes away from last month's report uh, and take your eyes uh, on faith he who observe the wind will not sow he who regards the cloud will not reap what did he say verse five and six in the morning, sow your feet, see it. I said, sow your seed. Whatsoever you are expecting, sow it. Sow your seed. In the evening, don't withhold your hand. For you don't know what will prosper, either this or that. But one thing is sure, something will prosper. I said, your, way, your labor will not be wasted. Something is about to prosper. Something is about to work together. So in the morning, so in the evening. Either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Continue. Continue. Truly light is sweet. You have jumped it fast. There is a verse that says, Five. Uh -uh. As you do not know what is the way of the wind. How bones grow in the womb. So the womb was actually a place where a seed was planted. The same way you don't know how a seed grows. That's the same way you don't know how a child is formed. So when the child came, the harvest did not look like what was sown. I can't plant maize. I can't plant seed of cleanliness and reap a tog. I can't plant maize and reap tomato. You don't know how the bones grow in the womb of one. So you don't know the works of God. What did he call that operation? The works of God. Today, God will work for your favor. When you see it, you will know that he has satisfied all your expectation. Suddenly, the guy stood up. We don't know what happened in his mother's room, but we know what happened when Paul spoke. I don't know what they said, but what I know is what I'm saying. And what I'm saying by it, I overturn every report. Uh, you are not saying the amen. Please play that keyboard. I say I overturn every report. He said, you said, every other thing is right. It's only this thing that is creating shame upon my story. I overturned that report. In the name of Jesus, I overturned that report by the works of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. I overturned that report in the name of Jesus Christ. In Psalm 126, verse 5 and 6, Psalm 126, verse 5 and 6. The Bible told us, 
Those who sow in tears will reap in joy. There's always joy in harvest. There could be tears in sowing, but there is joy in harvest. They shall reap in joy. What will they do? Verse 6. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come with rejoicing. Everything you have acted upon, but that did not bring commensurate reply, that made your weeping to be sustained. Today, that delay is broken. Play that. I say, it's broken. I say, it's broken. I say, it's broken. They told you it's because you left your former church. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord said, I do a new thing. Remember, you know the former thing. It's because of what I am doing now. And it will spring forth. It will spring forth. It will spring forth in your body. It will spring forth in your mind. It will spring forth in your soul. It will spring forth in your womb. It will spring forth in your health. In the name of Jesus Christ. He will continually go forth with him bearing seed for sowing. Shall doubtless bring it. Bring it. You are not coming alone. You are coming with something. You are holding it by your side. It's a child. It's a job. In the name of Jesus. It's a result of labors. You are carrying it on your side. They are dandy. They are on your I can see them on your laps. I can see them on your laps. Ayata Gushakanaba. Landi Katoba. In the name of Jesus. As the Lord liveth before whom I stand, I command fruitfulness. I command harvest. I command harvest. Oh, you foul spirit. Let my people go that they might serve me. I break the joke. I break curses in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You are going back to school. That's not where you stopped. That's not where you stopped. You are picking it again. And you are coming out with a result. Now you are coming out with a result. By the word of the Lord. By the word of the Lord. Lift your hands and give him praise. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, but Pastor, I don't know. Nobody knows the work of God. I don't know what happened to the lame man. It was too mysterious that the people of that land said, the gods have come down. And this thing that happened, it didn't happen from the realm of man. It's the work of God. The pastor did not say anything. All he said is his way. Oh, by that word we activate the workings of God. It is well. 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 What you have tried to do in five years of saving that you couldn't do, you will do it in three months. You will do it in three months. It is well with you. It is well with you. It is well with you. If you believe, you say, I believe now. Glory be to God. In Mark chapter 4, verse 26 to 29, the kingdom of God is like a man who took a seed in his hand and planted it and slept and woke up. And he did not know what happened, but he sprouted. He did not know. I've not called you to explain. I've not called you to interpret. I've called you to receive. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive it now. 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 The gift of faith is at work in this message. Receive it now. I've not called you to explain. The man slept. The man woke up. He did not know, but he saw that the seed sprouted. He himself does not know. What is the next verse? Look at the next verse. For the heart should grow by itself. Somebody say by itself. Not by your walking. By itself. 
there's a way some things work by themselves because it's the work of God first the blade then the head after that the full grain in the head alive verse 29 but when the grain ripens immediately he put in the sickle because the harvest has come he doesn't say hey me what does he do I'm not explaining it I'm just receiving it I'm not explaining it I'm just receiving it and I don't know why pastor preached this message. It does not look like pastor's message, but I'm receiving it. I'm receiving it. I'm receiving it. And you are going up with it. It's your portion. dear Samba, it's your portion. In the name of Jesus, it's your portion. In the mighty name of Jesus, it's your portion. It's your portion. Asalaba yada abre kabo feni kali la subara. It's your portion. It's your portion. By the word of the Lord, by the spirit of the Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When the grain ripens, the man said, I'm tired of explaining. All I know is that God has done something. All I know is that God has done something. I don't know why that person was sad. All I know is that they called me. I don't know why that person left the job. But all I know is that they called me. Because when the harvest comes, you just put in your sickle. Stretch your hand like you're putting in a sickle. I'm taking my harvest. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. In John chapter 4, verse 34 to 38, Jesus said, I've sent you to an harvest you did not sow. You did not so. He said, in this, this saying is fulfilled that both he that plant and he that reap share one thing, rejoice. Both he that plant, my food is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Do not say there are still four months and there comes the harvest. Behold, I say, Malabaka. Behold, I say, Behold, I say, Oh God, hear my voice. Behold, I say, Behold, I say to them, Lift up your eyes. Look at the fields. They are already white for harvest. This is your month. I'm not even talking about March. I'm talking about February. I'm talking about February. Ayala Bosandaya. He who reaps, receive wages and gathers fruit for eternal life. That both he who sows and he who reap. What happens to them? It's called the joy of harvest. The one who sows is, is, is happy. Why? I didn't waste my labor. The one who reaps is happy. God has given me a place. God has given me a place. Everyone here go home with joy. Everyone here, as the Lord lifts, before whom I stand, go home with joy. I speak to you, I speak to you in a matter of days and weeks. A major visitation that will change your life has come. It has come. It has come. It has come. Lift your hands. You will receive your joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. There are two types of joy I want us to rejoice about today. One is his healing power. The other is his saving power. That's why I sang in the beginning. Savior, the one you saved has come to worship you. Healer, the one you healed has come to worship you. Those, you stand at one of those junctions. And the stories we have spoken today speak about what, at least one of them speaks to you. He said, in Isaiah 53, verse 6, Isaiah 53, verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. He had us, we left him. He had sheep, it left. He had coin, it was lost. He had son, it was lost. And it did. all we, we might not all be sick, but all of us at one point or the other, 
have been in the lost coin. All of us at one point or the other have been the lost sheep. All of us at one point or the other have been the lost son. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. The Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. That's where when the prodigal son came back home, the father never spoke about his iniquity. Somebody had taken it. You are not coming. It's not, it's not putting back your iniquity on you. It's called a word of reconciliation. He didn't even talk to him. Where did you see how you wasted my money? He didn't talk to the coin. Do you know how much of sweeping I've done? He didn't. What did he talk to? He talked to the neighbors. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. That's Jesus. As a sheep before his share is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. That word, he said, he, he said, the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes were healed. Those two, those two experiences were presented. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. And by his stripes, we were healed. Are you following me? Those two possibilities. We have gone astray, but he became the shepherd. Look at how Peter put it. Look at 1 Peter 2, verse 21 to 25. Look at how Peter put it. 1 Peter 2, 21. For to this you are called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should what? Follow his steps. Who committed no sin? nor was deceit found in his mouth. Continue. Who, when he was revived, did not revive. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree. That we, having died to sin, might believe for righteousness. By whose stripes you are healed. You are healed. You are healed. For you were like sheep going astray. The first one is that you are healed. The second is that you are going astray. But now you have returned to the shepherd. An overseer of your soul. Stop trying to find your way by yourself. Somebody say, I have a shepherd. There's something about where the sheep will eat the next time. It's not the sheep's headache. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Add nothing to do with my intelligence anymore. It has all to do with who my shepherd is. I said it has all to do. Who is your shepherd? For we have returned to the shepherd and to the overseer of our souls. So present here this morning on this table of God is the chance to return back to your shepherd. And the stripes by which you were healed. And when these two happen, you go home with the joy of harvest. I will stop here. The Bible told us that when Philip preached in Samaria, Acts chapter 8, verse 4 to 8. What happened? There was joy. Why? For lame people, paralyzed people were healed. Oh my God. When you, rest, when you are restored back to how you should be formed from your mother's womb, there will be joy. When your hand start functioning the way it ought to function, and your brain start functioning the way it ought to function, and your legs start going the way it ought to go, there will be joy. Today you are healed. In the name of Jesus. Two prayer points and we are true. Psalm 94 verse 8 to 10. Are you blessed this day? Who is going on with the joy of harvest? At least I found my shepherd. I found the bishop of my soul. And I'm even taking extra. I'm living healthy. I'm living strong. Are you following me? I'm using what I've not used before. What was your man to me? Not anymore. 
Ah, uh, no, no. God gave you two hands. The two will function. Uh, that left leg is paining me. I usually, I used to work on it delicately. Oh, no, 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 no. It will function the way God ordained it. Strength will come into it. Life will come into it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Understand, you senseless among the people. And you fools, when will you be wise? He who planted the here. Did he make a mistake? He gave that guy two feet. The guy had two feet. But he was sitting. He was not sitting because he wanted to listen. He was sitting because he couldn't stand up. And God said, this is senseless to have legs and can't walk. To have husband and not have peace. To have job and not have increase. Our cock on lobby she knew. One day joke will lean you. And the kilos one low she said. I daba. He who planted the year. Shall he not hear? He who formed the here. Nothing is happening in your life without purpose. You are not going to work just to waste your time. No, everything you are doing must contribute. God planted everything definitely. You look at the human body from head to toe, nothing is useless. I studied science recently and they even discovered that there is a part of our body we call the appendix that they said was not useful. They found its use. It stores, the, it's like a data bank. It stores all the anti, when you use antibacterial, what do you call it? Antibiotics. That's the storage that, that keeps, it keeps it that thing there for a month in your body is in the appendix. Kilo for long pay. You think he's senseless? He who planted the air shall he not hear? He who formed the air shall he not see? And Ojunye, to see it No! If it is true, the two will walk. If it's two years, the two years are working. If it's two hands, the two hands are working. If it's a job, it's productive. If it's a job, it's increasing. If it's a job, it's blessing. It's not a waste of time. He will instruct the nation, shall he not correct? He will teach his man knowledge. The Lord knows. What does he say? I don't think God is like a man. He looked at the leg. Leg is not for crossing. When Paul knew the man had faith, Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. None of your possession will become your problem. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't buy something that will now begin to drain your resources. No! Say no! If he gave you legs, legs will function for what they are ordained. If he gave you job, job will function for what they are ordained. If he gave you marriage, marriage will function for what is ordained for. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything God is giving you is functioning in the order of yours, of his blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, Isaiah 66 verse 9. Isaiah 66 verse 9. Glory to God. Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery? Says the Lord. Shall I who cause delivery shut up the womb? I'm the one who created womb. And I knew why I created it from the beginning. Why did I create it? As small as my baby is, is already there. The time has not come but it's created. Do you know why? God knows a time he will need it. Whatsoever God has kept in your body, whose time has come, must function. Whatsoever God has planted in your body, whose time has come, must function. When you come into that season, when the need of that, part, of that body part has come, it will not fail you. It will not fail you. It will not fail you. Stand to your feet, everybody. They are going to talk to God about anything not functioning. Say, God, you are wise. You planted the ear. The ear must hear. You planted the eyes. The eyes must hear.
Put your hand upon that knee. And ask God that it begins to function the way God ordained it. Thank you for healing. Oh, thank you for joy. Some of you are receiving it now. And you are coming out with testimony now. Joy. Joy of celebration. Joy. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, all these expectations are delivered in the name of Jesus. They are hanged on the one who causes all things to function according to the counsel of his will. Bring everybody out of the children church. Everybody. Rabo Kosando Roba Kadia Baba. Reba Baba Baba Sendo Roba Baba Baba Keda Raba Baba. Shaka Roma Baba Baba. As you have ordained it, so shall it be. As you have con as you have designed it, so shall it function. So shall it function. No devourer can stop it. No one can waste my labor. I have victory over the enemy. I have no sense of loss. In Jesus' name we pray. Let me tell you one reason why you must have an harvest. 2 Corinthians 9, 8-11. to Let me tell you, in the days of harvest, doing good is easy. Because you are going to have much more than you even can recollect that you need. So what do you do? That's why you see in your churches they do harvest. They say, ah, I think for long till. When some people have great harvest, they will send to their uncle. I don't know whether you have had farmers as parents. They will say, take three tubers of yam. Because harvest gives you sufficiency for good works. Are you following me? God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you, somebody say me. Say that me. Always having all sufficiency. May have an abundance for every good work. Look at the next verse 10 and 11. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. Are there people here who want to give to the poor? You want to stretch? He said, Let me tell you what you need. You need an harvest. When it comes, it comes with a joy that will push you to do it. He has this ladder. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Verse 10. Now he will supply seed to the sower, bread for, um, for food. Supply and multiply the seed you have sowed. And increase the fruit of your righteousness. Verse 11. While you are enriching everything for all liberality. When others come, two types of things are given to you. One is called bread. The other is called seed. You, you take enough, then you look around. There's something to go out. In the name of Jesus, your blessings will go out. Not because they are leaking, but because God is using you as a blessing for somebody else. The type of harvest that will give you bread for food and seed for sowing is your portion from today. That's why you are not in the type of job that cannot take you home. Yeah. We disconnect you from that. No. That's not harvest. Harvest must have seed for sower, bread for eater. I say harvest must have seed for sower, bread for eater. I command that harvest to come to you. Lift your hands and begin to receive it with thanksgiving today. Receive it with thanksgiving today. Receive it with thanksgiving today. 
Marabayando Boshikabo Ore Malaba Shando Rebale Baloka de Lebado Balega de Balebo de Gada Arigabo Sharama Dabo Catalida Rabada Balaba. You will finish that master's degree with honor. We honor Rabo Sande Karibo Kabaki Darabo Bakaba. Anda liku karabo barike talubo sandi ata riba labo karaba dia mamboki boko diaba. That thing they said is bent in your back. That bone bent. Straighten up. Straighten up. Straighten up. Straighten up. Aribo kabandi kadiko bali kadobaga angra di saruba rabaya aramo kobakadaya. God will give you an harvest. You will have all grace for liberality god will bring you into liberality you will be able to give and be a blessing in the name of jesus christ two things before we go the first joy is that we have returned to the shepherd one sheep lost brought back if you are not born again here Stop living in your own wisdom. Stop saying, I've been coming to church. Start come back to the shepherd. Start learning how to sit at his feet. Let him determine the direction. If struggle can deliver it, you would have solved it. If wisdom of man can deliver it, you would have solved it. But there is a shepherd. And he's saying, come. If you're not born again here, this is the moment to come. Whether you are online or you are on site, it's time to come to the shepherd of our soul. The shepherd of our soul. If you have anybody like that, you want to commit your life to Christ, raise your hand above your head. Let's pray. Come know the shepherd for who he is. Raise it above your head. Let me see it. Let me see it. Raise it. Raise it. Raise it up. Raise it up. Raise it up. Thank you, Jesus. Come to the shepherd of your soul. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. There is great joy in heaven now. There is great joy in heaven now. There is great joy in heaven now. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, put your hand, that hand on your chest. Put that hand on your chest. Say, Father, I come home today. Receive me into your fold. Wash me clean by the blood of Jesus. Take away the heart of sin from me. Give me the heart that loves you and follows after you. I love you, Lord, because you love me. And you gave your life for me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Let me pray for you. Today, by the mercy of God, the grip of sin is destroyed. It doesn't matter where you came from, you are not returning back there. It doesn't matter how the enemy has been dealing with you, you are not going back there. I command you to be free. It is written for you that he who the Son of God has made free shall be free indeed. Today, you are free. If there is any addiction, anything you are struggling with, today you are free. The joy of salvation, let the Lord flood your heart with it. Let the power of the Holy Spirit of God rest upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ. We receive you into the company of life and you live in the name of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a shout of victory. Give a lot of shout of praise. Hallelujah. My brother, my brother, I love you. God brought you here. Give the Lord a big hand for him. We will see you after the service. The next joy is that by his stripes, if you are sick of any sickness here, come. I want to lay hands on the sick today. I want to command that yoke to be broken. That yoke in the days of Midian is destroyed. That yoke that does not allow you to live in joy and peace is destroyed. It doesn't matter if it's in your ears, in your leg, 
is in your skin, is in your back, whatsoever it is, by the word of the Lord, Savior, we have come to receive your healing power. Thank you. Sing a song for me. Now, there's no acrobatics. Jesus is the one doing it. He's here. I've spoken the word, and that word has gone in ahead for you. You are coming back with testimonies. So what I'm doing is I'm just touching you. And I'm touching you. You are going home with a testimony in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Be you. Whatsoever be that affliction. That fever disappear, disappear, disappear in the name of Jesus. I stand as a servant of the good news of Christ by the stripes of Jesus. Heal in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah, open in Jesus' name. Every blockade, go. Every interest, disappear. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. What is it? Barabo Koshada. Ramba Kabo. Karida Bakas. Lord, I command that amen to go. That heaviness to disappear. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Before he left and returned, but now it will never return again. Be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Be healed. Oh God, I command the life of God to come into that eyes in the name of Jesus. Perfect sight. Perfect sight. Perfect sight. Perfect sight in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless your children. The healing of God is upon them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Put your hands on the eye. Perfect sight. Perfect sight. I don't know what it is. I rebuke it. Oh God, I rebuke it. Go. Every affliction in your eyes disappear by the stripes of Jesus. You are healed. You are healed. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Larabo Sharaba. Karibo Kobalia. Laribo Share Kaba. Bakuke to Robokaba. Karamadike to Kedaba. Oh God, your healing power over this baby. Receive your healing. In Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed. Be made whole. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, put your hands on it. Alaba ye kadisa, rodi keru de basufra, branda kute kabaka. Oh God, I testify of your glorious healing power. She receives it now in Jesus' mighty name. There is a change. Whatsoever is afflicting you, there disappears, 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 disappears. Disappears in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Perfect healing in Jesus' name. Put your hands on it. Oh God, we receive healing. Posa, Reno, Palusava, in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed from the hair of your head to the sole of your feet. In Jesus' name. What is it? Laramba Kabu. Garibo Shari Kaba. Baribo Kobakaba. Makiko deke de Kudika. Obrike Kuriba Sharaba. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. Whatsoever is the affliction, I take authority over it in Jesus' name. Disappear. Go and leave him. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be healed. Every stomach upset, every pain. Alabo kudi kadi karo baka. Lande kureba yika rabo kubaka. Arabaya, arabaya doba kada kido boko. Be healed now 
in the name of Jesus. Take it. It's your portion. It's the children's bread. It's a confirmation for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Take it. Put your hands on any point of order. Oh God, hear my voice over this life. Lord, we remove an harvest. Receive it now. Receive it now. Perfection. Perfection in Jesus' name. Your hips loose. Heal. Strengthen. Men old. Now, by the working of miracles. By the working of miracles. Elaboshiata. Elevelados. Elambadi. Sakoba. Riba. Strengthen them. Malosa. Strengthen them. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus. Lango de Bosa. Provide de Shaba. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I take authority over every affliction in your body to disappear. To leave you, restore strength, restore health, restore strength, restore health, restore strength, restore health in the name of Jesus. Go on, hold with joy in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank the healing power of God. Whatsoever it is, I command it to leave you. Whatsoever was not created with you to disappear. Be whole by the blood of Jesus. Be here in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That right pain. I command that pain to disappear. Kabo shakade lika lutamando bokutele. In the name of Jesus, behold, and you are from this moment, there is a change, a change in Jesus' name. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, see perfectly. Behold, now, 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 in the name of Jesus. standing for mommy we command the healing power of god to land upon her wherever he is she is oh god we take authority that eyesight to be restored we rebuke cataract glaucoma whatsoever is called to disappear in the name of jesus we speak for wholeness in jesus name in the name of jesus thank you father For your wife, we release the healing power of God. We rebuke that ulcer to go, to go, to go, to go. Oh God, she came into the company of the living. Let life enter into our body. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, your body, wholeness, wholeness, that leg, in Jesus' name, we command peace. Every pain to disappear. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Perfect healing in your, in your lungs, in your lungs, in your nasal cavity. In the name of Jesus. Be here. Be here. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands, everybody. The, the people have prayed for now. Check your bodies. Check what you cannot do before. Some of you are receiving instant miracles. Now, now, some pains are disappearing. What you can't do before you are doing. If you are doing it, shout with a shout of victory. I want to hear shouts of victory. I want to see the joy of harvest. Check your body. Check your eyes. Check that stomach pain. Check that lump. You are healed. You are healed. Thank you, Father. Finally, I speak to wombs. I 
say womb creates womb? Will I bring to birth and not cause delivery? Says the Lord. Every womb receive the harvest. Children are the heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. This month receive divine reward. No empty womb. No empty womb. No diseased child. No weak children. No sick children. No empty womb. The Lord fills every womb with the sound of joy. With the sound of joy. With the sound of joy. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. What is going on with celebration today? The joy of harvest. The joy of harvest. Joy of celebration. Joy of celebration. Joy. 